guys. I want to do a quick recap on where I am in training, what I've done, and what's expected next. So, uh, the last we spoke, I was in NDOC, uh, getting ready to finish that, and talking about some of the things that were expected and how things were supposed to flow after that. Well, as apparently always uh, in this industry, scheduling happens. So, I went on to ATP, CTP. Uh, you go over a lot of the, the same kind of things that you would do uh, in NDOC, just in a more generalized detail and not specific to your company. So, high altitude operations, uh, you know, some aeromedical factors, uh, things like that, that you would expect. Um, one thing that was really good about that is the instructor we had was in the industry for 20 years, so he had a lot of insight as to how things operate, and he was at the regional level too for most of that time, so it was good to hear his stories and how things were operating when he was in the industry and some expectations for us moving forward. That was three days, uh, so about eight hours a day for three days, lots of PowerPoints just sitting there rocking through, lots of uh, videos, crash analysis, and things like that, uh, seeing what mistakes were made and working through those. After that, uh, we had three days of sim training, which was great for the people that are going from 172s directly to something like a regional jet. Uh, I at least have been through A-type school four, so I'm a little familiar with uh, the way sims operate and how they fly different from the airplane and those kind of things, and some of the things of what to expect with jet operations, you know, being a lot faster than 172s and those kind of things, and what to expect with autopilot FMS. Uh, so it was very helpful for me, and it was helpful for the uh, gentleman that was going through the course with me to have someone that have, has done that before. Now, for those three days of sims, uh, it's just demonstration purposes. So you're going out and you're flying uh, some general little trips, stalls, turns, uh, CFIT operations, those kind of things. Uh, but it does, if you haven't had the opportunity to go fly stars, uh, SIDS and ODPs much, it gives you the opportunity to go do that. So you can start to review those things and start to get familiar with the layout of the cockpit of a regional jet, even if it's not the particular kind of jet you're going to be training in. Uh, how the FMS and the autopilot and those things are going to function and how you are going to be able to try and manage the speed associated with flying these high performance type of aircraft. So that was really good. Uh, it was fun, the, at least the, you know, the, the sim time was fun to get back into sim, and that's the closest I've come to flying an airplane since I started this journey, so it's, it's, it's been a lot of odd uh, not going and flying almost every single day like I have for the last almost four years. Um, finished that, and then I had a couple days off before I took my ATP written, so it was just study, 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 back and forth all the way through the Shepherd program. Uh, which was very long and tedious, but I continued to do so. Witten knocked out uh, my written. It only took about an hour and a half and made a 95 on it. So a little bit of that. You always tend to do a little bit better typically, I found, than you expect you're going to do. Uh, Shepard prepared me uh, very well for that. There were a couple of questions that were worded somewhat differently and a couple that I hadn't seen, but rocked on through that. And then um, I had three days off before I had to report for a uh, securities class that I missed at the end of my NDOC because I had to go to this ATP school. So I tried out my credentials, went in, uh, on the website, found myself a flight to Houston and back to Birmingham. And that went off without too much of a hitch. I was actually supposed to go to Denver and Birmingham, but my connection, uh, I was going to miss that connection because my flight leaving Phoenix was going to be delayed by an hour. And by the time I landed in Denver, my other plane was already gonna, going to have left for Birmingham. So learning to play the system a little bit, I ran, went down a couple gates and found a flight to Houston. And there's a lot more flights leaving Houston going to Birmingham. So I got myself down there and then was even upgraded for that last leg going back to Birmingham and got to see, uh, sit first class for the first time. So that was, that was really nice. Uh, and it helps tremendously to maintain a positive attitude 
and to be very nice with these gate agents when you're speaking to them. Uh, and it, it makes things a lot easier so you can progress through because most of the passengers are not very nice. So if you go up and you're asking them how their day is, you know, and those kind of things, and just keep a nice positive attitude, can you, can you possibly help me with this? Don't be demanding. It goes a very long way. On my trip back, I was uh, in Houston and I had a very full airplane that I was trying to get aboard uh, to come back for this last leg. So I thought I would try out my uh, jump seat privileges. So I went and registered as a standby and jump seat, which is always, you know, something you should consider if you're put in that kind of situation. So I did that, was approved for jump seat, so it was great. So at least I know I can do that. Ended not uh, getting a seat in the back, so I didn't have to jump up front for those three hours in that Airbus, which may have been neat, but at the same time, it's three hours in a jump seat, so something was comfortable. Uh, made my way back to Phoenix, and now here I am. So the last uh, day or two after that, I've been studying and getting ready for systems class. So if you can see all these uh, index cards making lots and lots of flashcards going over the different systems each little stack here Is a different system on the airplane so you can see you know, I've got some colors going. I'm just Trying to get as organized and uh, being as methodical for this next two weeks So this next two weeks is systems starts today and I've got an evening class set uh, so We'll see how that goes. I would prefer just go ahead and run uh, concurrent 10 days but you know I'm, they'll probably end up taking the weekend off however they they are not taking Thanksgiving off so <laughs> I'm just gonna work right through Thanksgiving and, and see where it goes from there uh, after that there's supposed to be an oral scheduled at some time and then FTP or maybe FTP and then the oral I don't know I'm trying to just learn to go with the flow but I'm hoping that I can get all that done a couple days before Christmas and I can go home because almost everybody I've talked to CRJ side and EJS side have had a week or two, sometimes three or more off before they go to SIMS after completing their oral and, and their FTP training. So it would be really great if I could be home a few days before Christmas with the family. They're all off for Christmas uh, basically through the first of the year, so I would love to be back for them. That would be a really great Christmas cruise for me because being here away from them so long, that's, that's definitely been the, the hardest part of this for me. But for now, I'm going to finish getting ready, and uh, pretty soon we'll talk about how systems class is going. Thanks for watching.